So what's exposure compensation and why would you use it? I'm gonna explain all of it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey, welcome back. Of course, here I am as always answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. Ask your own photo questions there and I'll pick the best ones and answer them right here on a future show. Today's question is from Mr. Dev. Yes, Mr. Dev. And he asks, please explain exposure compensation. Sounds simple, but what's really going on there? All right, when we talk about exposure, first just to, to make it clear what we're talking about, exposure only refers to how bright or dark the image is. We're not talking about focus or any other modes or issues, just brightness and darkness. So when we talk about exposure compensation, there are two kinds. There's regular exposure compensation and then there's flash exposure compensation. And I'm gonna talk about each one separately. First of all, exposure compensation in general now, the way the camera works, if you're in some kind of an auto mode, any auto mode like exposure, um, aperture priority or shutter priority or even auto ISO, that's an auto mode where the camera is deciding what the exposure should be. You can, those different modes allow you to set a different setting and it will pick the others, but it's still deciding in general what the exposure should be. Now, this also, uh, exposure compensation does have an effect in manual mode only in the fact that you can see the change in the meter, but it doesn't automatically make any change like it does in an auto mode. Now, when the camera's looking at a scene and trying to figure out the exposure, it wants to average it all out. So if it sees a lot of bright things, it's gonna darken it down. If it sees a lot of dark things, it's gonna brighten it up. It wants everything to be sort of middle gray. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. I'm here with Rosie today in the studio. Hey, Rosie. And what, um, what we have here is she's against a white background. She's wearing a white shirt. And I really want to expose for her face. But if I just put the camera on auto, so right now, um, this is a 1DX Mark II. I'm using the 85 1.4 lens. And uh, we'll get to the flash in a minute. I'm not using that right now. This is just using the ambient light from these LEDs we have in the studio. So I'm at aperture priority at 6400 at 5.6. And if I go ahead and take a picture of her here, Rosie looks awesome. Boom. So you can see now that is kind of on the dark side. The background actually looks really good, but because it's seeing so much white, it's darkening the overall exposure down and her face is actually underexposed. I really am concerned more about the exposure on her face than the background. So what I can do is go into the camera and the little plus minus, I can adjust that to go up one, let's say almost two stops, one and two thirds of a stop. And now if I'm in the same setting, same aperture priority setting, 6400 at 5.6, and I take a picture now, boom, now you can actually see the difference. Her face now is properly exposed. The background's bright white, that's fine. That's exactly what I want. But I have to think through and tell the camera, okay, this is what I want. So for example, if you were photographing somebody in the snow, people outside in the snow where everything's really bright white, but you still want to expose for the faces properly, you could use, in this case, I could use maybe the spot meter setting and put it right on her face and it would expose her properly without any compensation. But if you're in a situation like that in the snow with people running around, you're not going to be able to get that spot meter right in the right spot. So by shooting with an evaluative mode, um, and then just changing the exposure compensation for all the frames, you're gonna be much better off. So um, that's how it works when we're using exposure compensation. By the way, it works also the other direction. Obviously, if we were in a really dark scene and it was trying to brighten everything up, her face would be overexposed, right? So I could dial it down and have it darken the exposure overall. Now, new technology is trying to help us a bit. Um, for example, the new Canon 1DX Mark III has really cool evaluative metering modes where it has face detection built in and it knows the face and it can properly expose for the face without needing any exposure compensation. But that's kind of brand new technology and, it's, and it really helps to understand how the camera works and be able to make those adjustments on your own. So now the other type of exposure compensation is flash exposure compensation. Now this also only applies to auto modes with the flashes. Now if I put the flashes on TTL, that is an auto mode, right? I can set my camera on manual, but the flashes on TTL, they are each deciding individually what the light should be. So I've changed the setup here in the studio a little bit. So we turned off the LED that was in the background, just lighting it up for the video shoot and I'm only using flashes now. So I've got one Canon speed light in this big soft lighter. I've got another one on the background with a blue gel on it lighting up that background so we can really see what's going on here. Now I'm gonna switch the camera over to manual mode. I'm gonna to go to 800 ISO and 250th of a second, which is my flash sync speed, my max flash sync, and then 5.6 for my aperture. And 
So now the camera's on manual. I'm also using the STE3RT remote transmitter so I can, I can uh, change settings and I can do anything I want remotely with those flashes. So I've got them on TTL, ETTL, with no compensation, just at zero. Now, if I go ahead and take a picture here, and perfect. Now we can see that's actually a, a pretty good exposure, right? But the thing is that, like I said, the flashes are each deciding individually how much light should come out of them, and it's making that decision. I have no control over that. But what I can do is if I want to change one of those lights, remember, if I change my overall exposure compensation, it's going to change everything. It's going to change foreground and background, up or down. But let's say I only want to change one. I like the light that it's calculating to hit her face, right? It looks perfect. But the background, I think, is a little too bright. So I actually am going to go in and bring my B group, which is my backlight, I'm going to bring it down two stops from where it was, right? And so now I'm at negative two. And by doing that, if I take another picture here, hey, Rosie, what's happening? Boom. So now you can see the light on her is exactly the same, but the background now is two stops darker. And it's a little bit of a deeper, darker blue color that I actually like a little better. So flash exposure compensation gives me the ability to individually control, control the ratios of those two lights without globally adjusting everything. So it really is all about control. Now, don't forget when you do something like this, either the flashes or your regular exposure compensation, to put them all back to zero when you're done because tomorrow you're going to pick up your camera to do a shoot and everything's going to be under or overexposed and you're not going to remember why. So um, that is super important. Um, so it, really at the end of the day, like I said, it's all about control. Now I prefer to shoot manual strobes when possible. If the uh, subject distance is not changing, if we're in the studio here, normally I would have those on complete manual and that way it's going to fire the exact same amount of light every single time. But if you're in a run and gun situation where you're moving around and your subject is moving, let's say you're at a wedding and you're photographing the couple and you're walking around with them and your flash is just maybe it's giving you a little bit too much light but you like the way your background looks, you can bring down the compensation just on the flash without darkening the background as well. So it really, like I said a hundred times in every one of these videos, it's about taking control of your photography so you can get exactly the image that you want to make. So thanks Mr. Dev for asking that. I hope that helps. Uh, remember, go to AskDavidBergman.com if you have any photo questions. And uh, I also run a live concert photography workshop. You can join me all around the United States. That's ShootFromThePit.com. And lastly, you're already here on Adorama TV. I hope you're a subscriber. There's so much great photo content for free on here. I hope you check it all out. Thanks very much. I'll see you back here next week on Ask David Bergman. <laughs>